You may proceed. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Madam Speaker, President Obama announced one of the largest extra constitutional power grabs ever by a chief executive. He declared unilaterally that almost five million undocumented aliens will receive deferred action under some newfangled definition of prosecutorial discretion, Madam Speaker. Not only that, not only escaping consequences, he has decided to bestow benefits such as work authorization and immigration benefits. This, Madam Speaker, despite the fact that the very same president over 20 different times said he lacked the power to do what he just did. And he repeatedly said he's not a king. Now, Madam Speaker, his position may have changed after the election, I hasten to add, but the Constitution has not. That document is clear, time-tested, and true, and it says that this body passes laws, and it is the responsibility of the Chief Executive, Madam Speaker, to make sure that those laws are faithfully enforced. If this President's unilateral, extra-constitutional acts are not stopped, Madam Speaker, future Presidents will no doubt expand that power of the Executive Branch and threaten the constitutional equilibrium. But, but, Madam Speaker, this is not a fight between Republicans and Democrats. It's not even a fight. And I ask the members to take their conversations off the floor. gentleman will continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll back up in case they missed it. This is not a fight between Republicans and Democrats. It's not even a fight over immigration reform. This is a fight over whether this branch of government will ever find the courage to stand up for itself. The same document. <laughs> the same document that this and all president swears to defend gives this body certain tools, tools like the power of the purse. And it's about damn time we use that tool. So I would ask you to oppose this motion to recommit, support the underlying bill, and I would yield back my time. Yeah.